Hello, and welcome to my interpretable machine learning tutorial. This is Cynthia Rudin. Um, machine learning models are powerful and wonderful, but if we fail to understand how they're used in practice, there can be severe consequences. And in particular, if people use black box models, like overly complicated models or proprietary models, there can be severe consequences. And that's already happened. And I like this example because it considers one of the things that machine learning modelers don't usually think about, which is entering the fact, the fact that data often has to be entered by hand into a computer. So this is the case of Glenn Rodriguez, who was in prison since he was um, a minor, and he came up for parole and the parole was denied. And it was denied essentially because of a bad compass score. And compass is a predictive model for recidivism that's used very widely across the United States. Now, after Glenn's um, parole was denied, he realized that there was a typographical error in one of his um, criminal history features in the um, compass score calculation, and he figured that out by comparing his score sheet to someone else's. And so this is a case where a typographical error literally led to uh, years of a, of a prison sentence that you know wouldn't have happened necessarily if that typographical error had been fixed. So I'm gonna give you another example, which is credit scoring. Like, uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you pay off a loan, your credit score can go down, which is really unintuitive. Um, and like this, this is sort of a wide phenomenon that I noticed when I paid off a mortgage recently. And I noticed that even though it said I had low credit usage, which is good, it said I had a thin file because I didn't owe enough, owe money to enough, um, of enough um, places, and this is this is totally stupid. It doesn't make any sense, and I don't, you know, I don't trust this model, and I can't troubleshoot it because it's obviously proprietary. It's not my model. Um, they just gave me this this silly explanation, but you know, for somebody like me, it doesn't matter that I don't trust this model. But if I had a loan that was denied and it prevented me from buying a house, well, I would want a real explanation, not some silly explanation like this. Okay, so some definitions. An interpretable machine learning model is constrained. It obeys a domain-specific set of constraints so that someone can understand what it's doing. And I have a, a kind of a technical, more technical definition here, which is that it's a model that's constrained in model form so that it's either useful to someone or obeys some structural knowledge of the domain, such as monotonicity, causality, or generative constraints, or additivity, or some other physical constraints that come from domain knowledge. And um, there's a spectrum between models that are uh, very, uh, very sparse and interpretable where you understand exactly how the variables jointly come together to form the, um, the predicted outcome. And then, uh, you know, on the other end of the spectrum are models that are, that are just loosely constrained so that, for instance, they might increase uh, along one variable, right? Increase monotonically along one variable. Now, we need uh, interpretable machine learning models for many reasons, but the top two are really trust and troubleshooting. A lot of people don't trust a model they don't understand. So for instance, with the model that I just talked about um, with credit scoring, that's a model that I don't trust. <laughs> um, and then also, it's, it's very hard to troubleshoot uh, a model if you actually don't understand it. And uh, uh, interpretable machine learning models are used widely in criminal justice, uh, credit scoring, air pollution, air, airplane maintenance, many different health, many, many different healthcare applications. Pretty much anything, anytime you have a high stakes decision where it would be kind of really, really bad if it went wrong, right? If the decision was made incorrectly. Now I'm gonna give you an example of a fully interpretable machine learning model. So this is a model where you can really understand how the variables are jointly related to each other to form the predicted outcome. And this is called the two helps to B score, which predicts brain seizures in patients that are in the intensive care units of hospitals. Okay, so the model is called two helps to B because it's two H E L P and S, and then there's two points for the B, like if you if you kind of go down and read the, the, the sort of bolded letters there. And then the, um, so what that means is that the doctors who are using this model can can know the full model just by knowing the name of the model because of the, the abbreviation. And then once the um, patient gets a score, that translates into a risk of seizure using the table at the bottom there. 
Now, I should say that this isn't, I, what I've given you is a scoring system. It's one type of interpretable model, but interpretable models come in many flavors. So I don't want you to think that this is the only type of interpretable machine learning model that exists. Now, before I go any further, I want to dispel this ridiculous myth that you always need to sacrifice accuracy for, to gain interpretability. So this uh, image comes from the DARPA Explainable AI, BAA, and I looked at this picture and it's, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. So what they're trying to show is that you have to sacrifice learning performance to get an effective explanation, that there's some inverse relationship between the two. But um, this figure in particular doesn't have meaningful axes. It, this looks like what you know President Trump would have done with a Sharpie. It's just sort of something that somebody made up. It's not, you know, it's not real there. Um, and it looks like the person was trying to make a point that if you take a static data set and you run different machine learning methods on it, um, then you would have to trade off interpretability for um, performance. But the problem is that you don't do data science with a static data set. In data science, you're supposed to run your uh, data mining algorithm and then interpret the results, try to understand the results, and the insight you gain from those results helps you go back and fix your data processing and all the other things you may have done wrong so that you can do a better job next time. So in that sense, the plot is actually reversed. You actually get better performance when you have better insight. So that doesn't make any sense. And then here, they didn't define what they were talking about. Like, are they talking about ex like approximating black boxes or explaining black boxes, or are they talking about building interpretable models on a data set? And, um, and those two are very different from each other. And finally, the trade-off doesn't actually happen like this. And in particular, for many different kinds of data sets, even if you had a, a static data set and you ran a lot of different machine learning methods on it, um, in many cases, they all perform the same, uh, it, but it depends on the kind of data you have. So in my experience, if the variables themselves, if the features themselves are interpretable, there doesn't seem to be any benefit from using a very complicated model. And that's true for many problems in criminal justice and healthcare and so on. And that's been noticed all the way back to, since 1993. It's not just, you know, it's not just me saying that. And then um, on the other hand, if you have data that's very raw, like the kind of data where um, the features are like pixels or like, you know, um, a second or, or a tiny sl slice of time in a sound file. Um, in those cases uh, where the data lie on these narrow manifolds of feature space, then neural networks tend to be better. Right now that's the technique that's working, but they can still be made interpretable. So the argument still doesn't hold. So let me talk to you very briefly about what I mean about the data lying on these narrow manifolds. Um, so if you think about the feature space being pixel space and each image being a vector in this giant pixel space, um, then if you take a, an image that would occur in nature and you changed one pixel on it, then um, the image is no longer a natural image and no longer lies on the manifold of natural images. And, in, and those are the cases where sort of, um, you know, you, you neural networks tend to do really well. But for most cases, um, for most cases, you can do, um, as I mentioned, first of all, even in those cases, there's hope for interpretability. Uh, and then also in most cases, you don't, you, you can do just fine with a linear model or an additive model or a decision tree or something like that. Okay, so what is the difference now between an, an interpretable in, between an interpretable model and an explanation model? Well, interpretable models don't need to be explained, like the two helps to be score, which naturally comes with its own explanations. But um, an explanation model is usually really for a, a black box, right? Um, it's usually where you take a black box, some kind of complicated function, and then you try to do like linear approximations of it, or you try to compute derivatives of it, or you try to understand it in other ways. And um, as I mentioned, whenever you're using a black box model, you end up with these weird problems, like for instance, the fact that you're still dealing with a complicated model. And if you have a typographical error in the input to that model, it's still going to propagate through and it's going to be harder to detect, even if you try to explain the black box. Um, also, 
explanations can be pretty incomplete, like, for example, the explanations I got from the credit scoring agency. And then also, um, when you trust a black box, you are trusting the database that it was built from. Um, like, I don't mind, like I trust, comp I, I'm happy to trust complicated functions. I trust those every day. What I don't trust is databases because I've never seen a clean database in my life. And also, I guess my, you know, as I keep saying, if you can produce an interpretable model, why should you try to explain a black box, right? That doesn't really make much sense. And um, as I mentioned, I can, I have, I, I know that in every possible situation that I've come across, um, an interpretable model can be constructed that's of the same um, accuracy as an equivalent black box, even for problems like computer vision. Okay, so um, in other words, I guess what I'm saying is that um, if you look at you know, cases like recidivism prediction in particular, where we're using these proprietary models or black box models, as it turns out, those models happen to be just as accurate as very simple decision trees or very simple linear models. And there's not really any clear reason why we're using complex models for these cases. Um, and this has been fairly well studied uh, in, in criminal recidivism prediction. And I've listed a few papers at the bottom. Okay, so for this talk, uh, uh, I'm gonna cover a very tiny little fraction of the world of interpretable machine learning. And here, when I'm talking about interpretability, I'm just talking about interpretability with respect to the input-output relationship of a predictive model. I'm not talking about interpretability of the loss function. I'm not talking about causal structure. I know a lot of people think a model's not interpretable unless it's causal, but that's not, that's not the definition we're using here. Uh, interpretability is with respect to that input-output relationship from X to Y. And so um, I'm gonna cover sort of three three topics, just, just specialized topics that I've, I've chosen um, to, to discuss today. And in particular, sparse decision trees, scoring systems, which are sparse linear models with integer coefficients, like the two helps to be score, and case-based reasoning methods, and in particular, interpretable neural networks. And um, I should mention before I go on uh, that, um, a, that a good fraction of applied statistical models, and in particular Bayesian statistical models, fit into the definition that I gave of interpretable machine learning. And so those models are, you know, they've, they've, those models uh, do, would be considered interpretable machine learning models. And then also additive models are a very powerful class of interpretable machine learning models, again, um, that I won't have time to discuss today, but I have, uh, w wish, I, wish I had more time to do that. Okay, so um, what uh, the reason that I've chosen these three topics is because they really span the space of simple models to complex models. An interpretable model, as I mentioned, does not need to be simple. It just needs to be constrained. And so I've chosen through these three topics that lie on opposite ends of the spectrum of, of simplicity, but that are still interpretable. Another reason I chose these topics are because of their respect for how useful they are and how popular they are. So scoring systems have been used for 100 years in criminal justice. They're very, very popular in medicine. Uh, and um, decision trees are, uh, there was a, a paper that went over the top 10 algorithms in data mining. Decision trees were two out of those top 10. They are also very powerful and have been around for 50 years. And then neural networks are taking over um, radiology and also self-driving cars. So they're used for high stakes decisions. And so we really want them to be interpretable too. And then of course, the last reason I talk, I'm talking about these three topics is because they are just super cool. And there's a lot of things about these topics that you may not know um, if you haven't been following the latest literature. And so that's why I'm gonna talk about these three topics. Thanks. <laughs>